Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Nahmadu, Astainu, Astaghfiru, Unaul Billahi Min Shuri, and Fusina Min Sayyata Amali. May I be Hulu Fala, Madilla, Wamayud Lilu Fala Hadiyala. A shadow la ilaha illa law, what the law shriek Allah. وأشهدون محمد عبده والرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. إن الحمد لله أنا الحمد لله رب العالمين هو الذي جعلنا مسلمين. I'm not going to subject you to any further of this Arabic with a Texas accent. I want to make it easy for everybody, inshallah. A major situation facing all of us as Muslims today is the misunderstanding of Islam. At the time of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they understood exactly what he meant. They understood exactly, and that's why they rejected it. Today, it's, I don't want to say the opposite, but it's very different. People have understanding toward Islamic values and morals. But what they're getting is misunderstanding of what Islam really is. In fact, I want to go so far as to say that there are people that are already Muslims that they don't even know that they are Muslim. What is it to be a Muslim? Let's start with that. And it is someone who practices Islam. Because the word Muslim is from the same root. The one who is actively doing Islam. Islam is the noun. Aslama is the verb in the Arabic language. So let's discover what is the core of that, and then we can work forward, share it with other people. I'm going to be translating somewhat and giving a meaning or an understanding. One word in Arabic. But I can think of seven words that have to be all present at the same time in English. At least, at least, one word in Arabic, seven words, and that doesn't really cover everything, but it gives you an, a basic understanding. First is surrender. And we, as Muslims, we know all about surrender. Muslims have been surrendering to everything. It's airport security is, you know, Let's go through the machine. All right, we got that. Surrender. But surrender to who? Allah. Submission. Okay, we submit to Allah. Then obedience. We obey Allah. Third word, obey. Fourth word, Sincerity. We have to be sincere with Allah. Not 99.99%. No, 100% for Allah. Otherwise, not accepted. So already we got four words. Surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, 
Well, I'm doing all of this stuff. What am I going to get out of it? Ah, the word has it in there. Peace. A lot of Muslims, they will say, Islam is peace. No, that's salam. We don't say Islam alaikum. We say salam alaikum. Because what? The name of Allah is in the word Islam. Huh? What? The name of Allah, Allah, when, when you get through with the Salah, what are you supposed to say? Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Allahumma antis salam. Wa minka salam. What do you think that means? That's his name. Allah's many names. 99 that we know of. One of his names is Salam. We didn't realize that, maybe. Now, next time you say Salam Alaikum, you realize why it's so important for them to respond back with something even better. You just say, Allah's Salam be upon you. Whoa. But that's not all. Salama. You lived in Saudi for a while. You know the Arabs, how they are. They say, we translate it as bye-bye. But that's not it. They say, ma salama. What do you think that means? It is telling people that the highest way of saying bye-bye to somebody in Arabic, you're saying Allah's protection and safety be on you. Is that right? Ma salama. It's real fast. Salama. You can even say it like that. Salama. But it has a rich, beautiful meaning. That's not all. Now we had safety. What about security? This is also in that same word, salam. Because, face it, if you don't have security, can you really be at peace? And can you really have security if you don't have safety? So this is, again, look at this. It has to be all together. So you surrender, you submit, and you obey in sincerity. But look what you get. Safety, security, and peace of Almighty Allah, the one who created you from a drop. He created us. And he started out the Quran telling us exactly who he is and who we are. But before I do that, I'd like to get into some other areas. Back to the subject of people misunderstanding. What about the Muslims? Do we misunderstand anything about Islam? No, we, we know everything. Yeah. We used to go to the Sheikh, now we go to Sheikh Google. We have everything. I, I pull out my phone, <laughs> I can tell you anything. Right? I'm going to ask you, do you know what the very first word in the Quran is? What the very first, open up the Quran. What's the first word? Bismi, right? How do you translate Bismi? Bismillah. You say, in. Really? Anybody here know? By the way, you can raise your hand. That's okay. Anybody here know that that's wrong? Yeah. 
if I translate in the name of Allah, back to Arabic, I've got to say, Bismillah. Whoa. True or false? So why do we use in? Because at the time of translation, 800 years ago, to the English language by one of the Pope's buddies, one of the bishops, translated the Quran. Did you know that? First translation of Quran was not by a Muslim, by a Catholic priest. And the second translation, 200 years ago, a, a different version of the same translation was by another Christian, a Protestant, George Sales. And we're depending on these guys because everybody who translates Quran actually goes back to that and looks at that instead of going to the knowledgeable people of Islam and saying, how can I understand this? How can I understand that? But at that time, anybody came with an official notice, they would say, in the name of the king, in the name of the queen, in the name of the emperor, because that was official, and they were under that blanket or cover. All right? Now, I didn't promise not to bore you to death. I just promised that I wouldn't bore you with the Arabic or the Texas accent. You know that. So, but if you like to fall asleep, go ahead. This is the sunnah of a lot of Muslims today. Fall asleep in the khutbah. Okay? All right. Anyway, back to work. I want to talk about the first word revealed. What was the first word? It wasn't bismi. It was what? Ikra. Yeah, you can talk to the imam. It's okay. What does ikra mean? Obviously, after what you just heard from me, you know that I'm not going to say it means read, right? What does Iqra mean? Recite. Who said that? Alhamdulillah. Recite. Now, look at this. I want you to pay attention now because somebody fabricated a hadith and stuck it here just so that it would say the, the meaning, get this meaning out of it. Have you ever heard the, the scenario that goes on in the cave? The Prophet is there in the cave, and the angel comes to him. It's in Ramadan, it's at nighttime. And, and we're agreeing with all of that because it's in the Quran. But what is it? The angel says, he says, Ikura. And then, what is next? The false hadith said, Ana umi. I'm illiterate. But the Prophet said, Ma ana bikari. What is a kari? Now, if you know a little bit of Arabic, you know that this is the person who comes and stands and leads the Salat for us in Taraway, right? He's the Kari. We don't call him a reader. He's a reciter. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, I am not a reciter. So now what does Iqra mean? It means recite. Some people understand it to be read today because of so many 
uh, brainwashing over the 800 years <laughs> since the translation, but it still doesn't make it right. Absolutely doesn't make it right to make up a hadith. It was not a shame at that time, the prophet time, it was not a shame to be illiterate because you didn't know how to read or write. 99% of all the people walking on the earth didn't know how to read or write. That was not a big deal to them. It was a big deal to learn to read and write. Whoa, you know, he has a cousin that met somebody one time that could read. Oh, wow. He, he, this guy has a cousin who, <laughs> what are you talking about? We put such an emphasis on it today that we demand that our children, you don't even get out of college, you don't even get ma married until you have at least some degrees. Is that true? Why? That's, that's okay, that's not a problem, but why? You blame it on Allah. You say, Iqra, the first word in the Quran means read. Oh, really? I think it means recite. And if you wanted to insist on that, then why don't you have your children memorizing the Quran instead of memorizing philosophy and things that will take them away from Islam? Duh. All right, I'll, I'll wind it up now. I've got it to a point. I got you curious. I hope, inshallah, you'll continue searching. Maybe you'll find out, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there was a lot more you could say. I'm, I'm happy for you to do that. What is the last word in the Quran? Or the last word? It starts out with the name of Allah, Bismillah. But it ends with who is the message to. It doesn't say Muslim. It doesn't say movement. What does it say? Minul jinnati wan na. For the jinn and human being. Subhanallah. That message in there exposes the real truth of what Islam is supposed to be. The problem is not the message. It's those who have been left behind to convey that message. Us. We're not doing a very good job. We need to work. Alhamdulillah. For every one of us that are here today, there are several others who are not here. Maybe they considered that it wasn't that important to go for June. There is, chapter 62, if you go by the numbers like I do, in the Quran, Surah Juma, telling you in ayah number 9, 10, and 11, to, when you hear the call, leave off your work and go and hear the word. And then, Beautiful, tells you, go back to work. Go out and seek the bounties of Allah. 
maybe half hour, maybe hour, out of your schedule all week long. Allah is telling you. He's not asking you. He's telling you to do that. What about some of the other things? Five. Pump. Ten. We have five daily prayers. Yeah? But at least another five for Sunnah prayer. At least. So, if somebody is not doing that, maybe they didn't understand what prayer really is. Now, we can make prayers anytime we want to, even when the sun is right on the horizon, when it's straight overhead, or, yeah, and you say, oh, no, 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 we can't pray then. No, you can. No problem. You know why? That's dua. We can make dua anytime, right? There's no restriction on the dua. But we're not supposed to do what? Salah. What is salah? It means prayer, right? Huh? Actually, if you look, sila, what is sila? Connection? Allah offered for the prophet before that they would be able to make a direct connect with him. They didn't need a cell phone. They had a direct connect with Allah. They would face Jerusalem and they would make this connection with Allah. And then they would receive back information that they could go forward with and then when Prophet Sallallahu came, he said to us, all of us, all of us today have that same connection called Salah. You can do it anytime except when the sun is straight overhead, except when the sun is on the horizon for uh, Fajr or when it's on the horizon for Maghrib. Salah, direct connect. And we know about direct connect today. We, we have phones, we do that. We love this. But if you don't take care of your phone, what's gonna happen? Battery's gonna go down. Not be able to connect with anybody. Think about it. How important is the Salat for you? It's not something you're doing for Allah. It's something you're doing for yourself. And just like coming here, you didn't do it for Allah. You did it for yourself. Never expect that Allah is happy with you because you just did something half-heartedly. That's why we said 100%. 100%. Not 99.9. .9. Not to show off. Not for anything in this world. Only for Allah. If that's the message you come away with today, do it for Allah. Don't do it for anybody else. Inshallah. Now let's make some dua for our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the one who brought the message, endured so many years of re rejection, resentment, and outright hostility. He brought this message to us. So the minimum that we can do for him 
is after our prayers. Just make some dua. It's still in the prayer. You can make some dua for the Prophet Selection. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama salat ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inata hamidun majid. Allahumma barak ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim ala ala Ibrahim inata hamidun and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen who allah ja'alan muslimin assalamu alaykum assalamu alaykum